what was your gateway into the metal universe as far as guitar playing? Um, well, I, I'm pre-metal, so like I was listening to music before anything was called metal. Um, so I don't know. It's a weird question for me because I mean I was playing guitar through most of the '70s, because right, I, I think I started around '73. So, uh, you know, initially it was stuff like, uh, it was Kiss, certainly, and the Ramones, and uh, Cheap Trick, ACDC. Um, then by like, 79, it would be specifically 79, because that's when Priest opened for Kiss uh, on Long Island. And uh, the first time we ever saw Priest, and got really heavily in the priest around that time yeah, yeah. and I guess for me that was the first thing that and no one was even calling it heavy metal in 1979 as far as I remember but um, for me that's the first metal band I got into I mean because yeah. obviously you would call priest a metal band sure. I don't call ACDC a metal band or any of the other bands I mentioned but uh so Priest, I guess, would be truly the gateway. But I was already playing rock. I mean, I was a hard rock kid. That's what I loved the most. That was, the, you know, all those bands I mentioned and 50 more, you know, sure, growing sure. up. It was once I more got into uh, um, the Ramones and, and Ted Nugent, uh, but especially ACDC. That's pretty much where I learned how to play guitar. Yeah. I, I learned how to play guitar by listening to ACDC records, Power Age and... Highway to Hell, those two albums just constantly on the turntable and I would just sit in my room and learn every song, just learn the chords to every song and just copy how Malcolm played. This, that's that's what I wanted to play like, I just wanted to be able to play like AC DC. Um, funny, uh, Telly being one of your first guitars, uh, now you're a part of the Jackson family, not only are you a part of the Jackson family, Jackson's a part of the Fender family. And not only are you a part of that family, you have a signature product, yes. um, uh, actual production model also, which I think is incredible. Um, let's talk about that, man. What is what is it like, man, to have a signature guitar, especially with a company like Jackson? I mean, I, I've had a long relationship with Jackson going back to the 80s. We had a bit of a, I would have to say, a very weird beginning because when we first were, let's say, big enough, it was probably, it was on spreading the disease, where we felt like we could ask guitar companies for free guitars and yeah. be endorsed artists. And both Danny Spitz and I both wanted to play Jackson's. I had a Randy Rhodes, which I custom ordered at Sam Ash in New York in like 82. So I have like this, I still have it. I have this really low number Randy Rhodes. But uh, I love Jackson's, Danny loved Jackson's. And uh, so management hit them up about endorsing us. And they came back and they said, oh yeah, we'll definitely in endorse Danny, but uh, Scott's not a lead player, so no, we won't give him the guitars. Wow. Which I thought was, I took absolutely personally, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't understand that at all. Like, I was like, what, so what, what I do, I'm playing all the rhythms, like, so that means nothing, chords don't matter, like it just made no sense to me, and I got angry about it, and I, I went with ESP, because a friend of mine was running ESP at the time, and uh, went with ESP and was happy with ESP for three years and but then had a weird falling out with them and at by that point Jackson was really really wanted because now it's three years later and Anthrax was a bit bigger and uh, Jackson was very very happy about having <laughs> me into the fold yeah it's it's like the ultimate kid in a candy store kind of thing I mean I love guitars and the fact that uh, I have a deal with Jackson and then also being able to kind of reap the benefits sometimes of being under the Fender umbrella because not only do they have Jackson, but they have Gretsch and they have Charvel and AVH, and which I, I play as well now for a few years, and, uh, and Fender. So being a part of that world, that whole family, is just amazing. Like I was lucky enough to get one of those Gretsch uh, Malcolm Young salute jets. Oh, dude, those things are amazing. I saw when, them at NAMM. When, oh, look, I, I've been... I've known about that guitar for years from like the beginning, the, 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 just the, uh, when they first started even talking about doing a Malcolm guitar the right way, doing it for real. And for years, I mean, it took years to get it made. And uh, 
I, I've been like kind of just on the periphery, like hearing about the meetings with Malcolm and all this stuff and on and on and on. There was a point where it didn't look like it was going to happen, even though they made the prototypes. And obviously, it ended up happening. And I was lucky enough to be one of the guys on the list uh, that they were building one for. And I didn't get that for free. Yeah. There was no freebies on that one. I didn't care. I said, I, I have to have it. If there's one guitar I have to own in my life, it's that guitar. And, and uh, I was just lucky enough I got on the list where they built one for me.